Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 9 on Fargo CW. Well, these are the dangerous people. These are the folks with the violent crimes. We don't hear much about it, but we do know that there's gang activity in the Red River Valley. Authorities say they're actively tracking around 425 gang members or violent criminals. In fact, yesterday they announced the arrests of 79. Valley News Team's Molly Casey spoke with local police about what gang activity exists in our area. Our community was so quiet for so long, it was a void. During the month of November, the U.S. Marshal Service and the Fargo Metro Street Crimes Unit arrested 79 fugitives, a third being gang members. They're a part of our community. If they're here to commit crime, we don't want them a part of our community. Lieutenant Shannon Ruziska of the Fargo Police Department says with no homegrown gangs present in Cass or Clay counties, members from other gangs are drawn here. We get gang members from outside coming in here to sell drugs, have prostitution, and do other gang-related crimes here. While there are 47 known gangs represented in the Cass and Clay counties, that doesn't necessarily mean that those gangs are established. It just means one or more members are living in these areas. There are signs, though, that residents can look for that may indicate gang presence. If you see people putting up graffiti, which looks like it might be gang graffiti, let us know. Lieutenant Ruziska says gang graffiti often includes five or six pointed stars and crowns, tridents, or numbers. And tattoos can be a giveaway, too. If they have all the tattoos which tie them to a certain gang, we're going to ask questions, what about this gang? Are you a part of it? Lieutenant Ruziska says if you see something that may be related to gang activity, call the street crimes unit. It's better to be safe than afraid. It's an awareness issue. Be aware these people are out there. From Fargo, Molly Casey, Valley News Live. To combat the growth of gang activity, the High Plains Task Force works with the street crimes unit to monitor and identify new or existing gang members. A Minnesota man was given two life prison terms for his role in a Grand Forks murder and a meth trafficking ring in North Dakota and Minnesota. 35-year-old Modesto Torres was found guilty by a federal jury in October on several counts, including murder and conspiracy to distribute meth. Prosecutors say he was the leader of the meth trafficking operation and ordered the murder of a 24-year-old Grand Forks man at the Flying J truck stop in March of 2016. That investigation led to the arrest of 13 people involved in the meth trafficking operation. Back in October, Crystal Feist of Grand Forks was convicted on murder and drug trafficking charges and was earlier sentenced to 30 years in federal prison. Coming up after the weather, details on a bus crash involving members of the Moorhead State men's basketball team. And the search appears to be over for the body of a North Dakota woman murdered in California. Here's Justin now with details on your weekend weather planner. Justin? And thank you, Mike, and good evening, everybody. Yeah, here's a look at our tower cam time lapse. The Valley News Live Storm Team Sky Cam Network shot in Fargo. Plenty of cloud cover as we went through the morning. Temperature is rising through the 30s into the low to mid 40s today as we started to clear out just before the sunset. Here's the current temperatures. We're down to 29 in Fargo, 27 Valley City, 30 in Jamestown, 32 at Detroit Lakes, out toward uh, Devil's lake at 29 degrees 33 right now at thief river falls and a 30 at grafton wind speeds mainly from the south or west and uh, they are still pretty light say two to seven miles per hour so it's a warm flow as we go through this evening uh, we are starting to really uh, clear out devil's lake base in jamestown southern valley and into lakes country mainly clear skies we are just seeing a few more passing clouds in northwestern minnesota and some snow showers mainly in the Roseau and the war road area and just off to the south that is it for the moisture as we go through this evening high pressure is working its way in that disturbance that came through and gave some areas some snow showers earlier today working its way out the flow will be from the west but it will be a warm flow as we go through the day tomorrow so we're going to see another day of unseasonably warm air 
We're going to stay into the mid to upper 20s as we go through this evening as we keep that south or southwesterly flow. Now, plenty of sunshine as we go through the day on Saturday. Temperatures ranging from the upper 30s to the upper 40s with just a few passing clouds mainly off to the south. Uh, Fargo sees a high temperature of 47 and that is about 15 degrees above normal for this time of year. Plenty of sunshine with the winds light from the southwest. Elsewhere across the region, northwestern Minnesota, the cool spot into the upper 30s, Jamestown at 46 tomorrow, and Lakes Country into the lower 40s with plenty of sunshine to go around. And then for the day on Sunday, we are going to see an increase in the clouds. A system is going to be off to our north and to our west, but most of the moisture from it will stay out that way. Another day for your Sunday where temperatures will be well into the 40s. And again, we, sh we should be into the upper 20s for this time of year. Here's the photo of the day. It's called Fire Sunset in Comstock. Thank you, Tiffany, for this one. We'll use it in the background of the seven-day forecast. There's your 47 on, on Saturday. We got mostly sunny skies, increasing clouds Sunday, a high of 50. And then temperatures start to fall, 32, a morning high, falling all day. We're going to be into the mid-20s by Tuesday. The wind picks up to start next week with a slight chance of some snow showers both days. 20 for the day on Wednesday. We've got partly cloudy skies. Then for Thursday, another chance of some snow showers. Temperatures staying into the lower 20s. The wind does pick up again, become breezy. And even colder air behind that system for Friday, high of only 15 degrees under partly cloudy skies. It's a solid tailgating forecast for tomorrow. Hey, very good news. If you, if you have outdoor plans tomorrow, temperature's still well above normal. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm. New at new, nine, uh, new for you at 9 tonight. Four people were hurt in a crash involving an MSUM men's basketball team bus. Among the injured are three under the age of 10. Authorities say it happened 30 miles west of Jamestown on I-94 this afternoon. A semi had to swerve to miss a stopped vehicle cut in front of a car, causing the MSUM team bus to rear-end the car. Now, the driver of the car, 34-year-old Joel Hill of Fargo, along with three kids, had to be taken to Jamestown Hospital for minor injuries. The children involved were aged 9, 5, and 18 months. No one was hurt in the team bus that held 20 people. The team had a game scheduled tonight in Bismarck. We're also following new developments tonight out of California, where authorities say that they believe they have found the body of a former Bismarck, North Dakota woman in a Southern California desert. The news comes as family and friends were honoring her life with a funeral in Mandan today. Army veteran Julia Jacobson went missing Labor Day weekend. Detectives found the remains of an adult female and what they think are the remains of her dog near a rest area in Cactus City. That's uh, east of Los Angeles. Now, at this point, police cannot confirm the identity of the woman, but say that Jacobson's ex-husband, Dolan Ware, cooperated with officials, which led them to that location. We used a uh, San Bernardino County Sheriff cadaver dog uh, known as Ellie that came out to the area and uh, found a shallow grave. Uh, within the grave there was some uh, remnants of a, an adult female and dog that was found. So uh, the coroner is here and I worked on the crime scene and we'll be investigating to get confirmation. Dolan Ware was arrested back in January on suspicion of murder. Still no word on the total damage at a South Fargo apartment building today. It started with a small kitchen fire at the 4400 block of Calico Drive. The sprinkler system knocked the fire down by the time firefighters got there. But the sprinklers continued to pour out water, which flooded the fourth floor apartment and others below. At least three apartments had to be evacuated. The Red Cross, we're told, is helping them until they can return home. Investigators say that no one was hurt in this incident. It's on to sentencing for a Minnesota man who was found guilty of attempted murder of a police officer. In March of 2016, Jan Michael Wangstead of Breckenridge was involved in a standoff at the Roadway Inn in West Fargo. He held police at bay for four hours. They say he shot at them. No one was hurt. SWAT investigators eventually talked Wangstead out. The sentencing date has not been set. He is already serving five years in jail for a terrorizing charge related to the same incident. Police say that there has been an uptick in thefts and break-ins in a portion of South Fargo. It's the Rose Creek area. Since November 4th, there have been 13 crimes relating to theft, break-ins, or burglaries. Police say some of those crimes are forced entry. 
I've lived here for 25 years and uh, we've generally had a very, very safe neighborhood, but I suppose no neighborhood is immune anymore. You just never know. So it's always good to be vigilant. Hetland adds that she still feels safe in her neighborhood because she has a secure alarm system. If you need help uncovering fraud or corruption in your community, Call this number on your screen. It's our whistleblower hotline. The number is 701-237-6576. Call the number and leave your tip. A member of our investigative team will get on the case and go to work to expose the truth. A Fargo man is offering a reward for information that hopefully will lead to a tree that was stolen from outside his home. More than 20 years ago, Paul Vogel and his dad planted the tree. Wednesday night, someone chopped it down and took off with it. Vogel describes it as a one-of-a-kind tree. It's just the nicest tree here, and it's hard to, hard to believe somebody that believes in Christmas and wanted a Christmas tree, and it's opposed to everything Christmas stands for. Vogel adds that whoever took the tree is a real-life Grinch. The reward would also cover information on who the Grinch is. Holiday lights are taking over Lindenwood Park in Fargo again this year. It's the 19th annual event put on by the FM Sertoma Club. We were there for the grand opening tonight. It features 79 colorful displays. There are plenty of opportunities to cruise the park this month and take in the lights. They'll be there through December 31st from 5.30 to 10 at night. Admission is $6 per vehicle or... If you want to reduce your price by a dollar, simply bring along a can of food. It'll be donated to local food pantries. A bus or limo will pay $10. The money from the, all the vehicles will go through, that go through the park goes to local charities. Still ahead tonight, Senate Republicans...